Let's take a look at the Estes Lodestar 2 rocket. Here I am finishing up the last steps in the build process and preparing it for flight on a C63. What we're watching me do here is carve out the little hole in the uh, payload coupler. This is where I will attach the shock cord that attaches the payload to the body tube. And I had a little bit of a difficulty carving out this hole. The plastic was pretty thick. The only way I really know how to do it is to carve it out with a hobby knife. If somebody has a better idea than this, please leave it in the comments because I had to work kind of hard at it. As we see here, I'm still working at it. Also note that uh, the part of the uh, coupler that goes into the body tube, I had spray painted and then had to sand off because the thickness of the paint made the fit too tight. So don't do what I did. Tape that section off and uh, that way you don't have to do the extra work of sanding the paint off. Here I'm carving out the hole in the nose cone. And what you're going to see me do is run a piece of paracord uh, through the payload section and that uh, lower payload coupler to attach the uh, nose cone and the coupler together. You don't really have to do this. It's a little bit redundant, but uh, it prevents me from friction fitting the parts really tight and worrying about uh, putting too much stress on them. Doesn't look like that one came out. That, uh, that hole was punched out very easy either. Uh, okay, there's the shock cord. Looks like I'm going to go ahead and attach the shock cord to the uh, payload coupler. Just a regular uh, overhand knot. Nothing too fancy. And cut off the excess so it doesn't get tangled with the parachute. And that looks like about the right length of paracord. Go ahead and tie one end of it to the nose cone. And then I'll feed the other end through the payload section and through the inside of that coupler and uh, tie it to the coupler at that by putting it through that same hole that we uh, just attached the shock cord to. Again, you don't have to do this, it's redundant, but uh, it's not a bad practice. It's hard to see what I'm really doing there. Looks like I confused myself with my knots or something. Can't quite remember, it was a while ago when I was actually doing this. It will trim off that excess there. And I'll make a little loop here to attach the parachute. I'm using a nylon parachute. Also note, I'm just flying this in the single stage configuration. So if you're wanting to see the two stage flight, then you will have to find another video. Here I'm going to put a little thrust ring around the back of the motor to prevent it from shooting up through the rocket. That's because I don't put a thrust ring inside the top of the motor tube because I like to put different length motors inside the motor tube and this way I'm not restricted. I try to keep the OD of the thrust ring to be about the same as the OD of the motor tube because in a couple uh, or in however many seconds we're going to watch me uh, wrap a piece of tape that goes around that thrust ring and the motor tube to keep the motor from ejecting out the back when the ejection charge goes off. That piece of tape right there is for the friction fit. I like to have it in there kind of snug. But really it's the tape around the back that prevents it from ejecting out the back when the ejection charge goes off. So 
So it looks like I'm being quite meticulous here. I'm doing a good job. And we'll wrap that tape around there and it'll be, or at least the motor will be installed properly. And then all that's left will be to, to add the wadding and it'll be ready for flight. There it is, looks perfect. So this rocket here is a combination of parts from some different rocket kits that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I can't remember exactly which ones, but I do see the nose cone from the baby Bertha. The tube looks like the same diameter as a vapor, and it does have a 24 millimeter motor mount. So that might have been the kit that it came from. I just can't remember. Uh, but I wanted to build a rocket that looked like this and have uh, nice big fins so that it flies straight on the E11 motor, which we're going to see it fly on here in a second. And uh, we're just going to watch me tape together the loose ends of the shock cords to prevent tangles. And then we'll see the flight. All right. It's good. So this rocket here is a Sunward kit and it's pretty similar in size to the Quest Astra and here I'm uh, tying on the Jolly Logic Altimeter 3, and we're going to see it fly here in a second. I believe the motor was a B64. I think that's right. And we will be able to see the uh, data. But before we see the flight, let's watch me tape in the motor. I did not use a motor hook for this rocket because... I intend to fly it on QJet someday, and so when I don't have the motor hook, I work very hard on doing a good job with the tape. So just watch really carefully uh, what I'm doing here. All right, so that motor is looking very secure. It is 
definitely going to stay in that rocket. There's the altimeter 3. I like using the uh, elastic shock course to tie that and Look at this very majestic takeoff. I didn't quite get that whole thing on camera. Sorry about that. But you can see it coming down on the streamer very well here. See it nice and close up here in a second. Ah, oh, there you go. See the nose cone and the altimeter are below the rocket. The streamers fully open. Okay, let's check out the data. Speed was 132 miles per hour. Max altitude 448 feet. The descent 23 feet per second. And there's a list of the parametric data.